once I landed there, mm-hmm. there was like the first. I was studying at Cape Breton University, right? Mm-hmm. So once I landed there, I already had. I landed there in April 2022. Mm-hmm. So around this time, the influx immigration was not as bad as as it got in the last 12 to 16 months. Mm-hmm. So I could find an accommodation through India. I mean, India. And I went there, landing there mm-hmm. with the house already in my hand. Mm-hmm. But once I landed there, and it was the first semester, so mm-hmm. there were 500 students around 500 in that intake. Mm-hmm. And then in the next four months, that mm-hmm. was the September intake. Like we had a very big influx, 3,500 students suddenly popped in from like mm-hmm. India. Mm-hmm. So that is when the proper housing. Uh, Crisis began, rental crisis. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pro- rental crisis, not just housing crisis, but like because we rent out there as students. Mm-hmm. Also, how high, how high the prices were? Mm-hmm. That happened in the next eight months. Like the first, after the first four months, I saw that suddenly there are there's a very big shortage of housing. Mm-hmm. Students are being put up together mm-hmm. in like you know in one single room basically how we live in india so mm-hmm. it was not much of a difference and in all honesty even indian accommodations are way better we as a developing nation even we are doing way better than them that's mm-hmm. a developed nation mm-hmm. so there were like basically landlords started to so i was being in september 2022 mm-hmm. when so many students came in right mm-hmm. so for the canadian landlords this was an opportunity to make money just like the school is making money out of us yeah. so they started to put up uh, rooms together like i have seen that happen in my neighborhood as well mm-hmm. that they all started to put up more rooms you know like they'll put one plywood mm-hmm. and make one single space they'll put two beds like they'll just buy a mattress for like 100 dollars or something mm-hmm. and they're putting up students like pigs basically like mm-hmm. four or five in one room So basically, they started to put up together. Like when there was a rental crisis, so obviously students just survived. So we were all sitting, to, like you know, making do, mm-hmm. like a small space of four or five students being put up together. Mm-hmm. I even saw like another house, Thomas had like a house. I so his his house was full of fifteen uh, students. Mm-hmm. In a span of four months, he put up rooms together. He put up beds together. Mm-hmm. and he started because the inflation is also so high so they're all just making money out of us yeah so yeah so like they just started to put in kids like that so of course the first thing that i saw was that and that's a very small town okay where mm-hmm. i was i was not in a city like delhi or mumbai like mm-hmm. toronto i'm comparing this mm-hmm. in an indian context i was in a city like in a small city like something you can call i don't know how to put it but like really small mm-hmm. something like Mangalore kind mm-hmm. that's next to Mangalore mm-hmm. or even smaller than that like a tier three city mm-hmm. in Indian context if you mm-hmm. compare it mm-hmm. so obviously there was no uh, laws or regulations you know not somebody particularly looking at them that what exactly are they doing so first I saw that you know they were putting up houses to put in students mm-hmm. to make money mm-hmm. and then in January mm-hmm. I started seeing that the rents are also going way up. Mm-hmm. The rents are going way higher because nobody is stopping these uh, slum lords. You know mm-hmm. that's what we call them. They're slum lords. Mm-hmm. So nobody is stopping them. So of course, even the rent went high. Mm-hmm. First, they made space, mm-hmm. and then they are charging. For example, if a house is worth three hundred to four hundred dollars in Canadian context, mm-hmm. it shot up to like seven hundred or eight hundred just for a bed. And sixteen hundred, around twelve hundred to sixteen hundred, just for a single room. Mm. And that is in a tier three city of Canada. Mm. And if you convert, if you do the currency conversion, I mean, it's just not worth it. Mm. Canadian uh, dollar to INR. Mm-hmm. So yeah, of course, I did see all of that. Basically, first of all, students being put up together like pigs, and then the second thing was that. Uh, and so only I thought you were going high. Yeah, your expectation, uh, as far as education is concerned, you mm. had to take classes in cinema halls. Why is that? Is it only because of the influx of students? They did not have proper and uh, you know um, ample amount of infrastructure. What was exactly the reason behind uh, these people that they were forcing you to take classes over there? 
and not in the college campus so the most shocking thing was honestly in the first go the most shocking thing was when we were just 500 students mm-hmm. even at that time we were studying at the cinema theater mm-hmm. it's not like with just a bunch of 500 students they had space so my first semester i spent studying at the cinema theater mm-hmm. and imagine when they already so what this says is that they already don't have infrastructure right mm-hmm. and then they brought in more 3500 students so obviously then what they started doing was if they were renting out two cinema theaters like you know two theaters so like these, in were, this. these were like non functional theaters right no no these are functional theaters oh. like people used to go and watch movies there so in the evening time they used to play movies mm-hmm. and in the morning time the university was renting it out as classrooms wow yeah that was the scenario like you know that and it was for entertainment purpose in the evening mm-hmm. the evening shows used to play out and morning was class was time so oh. that's how it went out so you know when we in the first semester were studying at the cinema theater mm-hmm. already like when i landed in canada i was like what is this like why are we at the theater mm. then we protested inside there like on facebook pages and stuff mm. so then what they did was they tried to accommodate some of us mm-hmm. in the evening uh, sorry at the university mm-hmm. they tried to accommodate so we did have an option mm. but i am only talking about me and everything kept changing in canada every 4 months mm. with every intake Mm-hmm. If I am having an experience today in April 2022, mm-hmm. the ones who came in September 22 had a super different experience. Mm-hmm. The ones who came in January 22 mm-hmm. had a worse experience. So you know what I mean? Like the measuring scale kept getting worse yeah. because they kept filling in students. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean they were just putting us up in Cineplex. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I was telling you that if they rented two cinema theaters, mm-hmm. then I saw this semester I left, right? This September I left. Mm-hmm. This September, I saw that they from two to they started renting out ten theaters. So basically, they were renting out the whole of the cinema theater to yeah. to put up students. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what happened basically was I registered for my classes in August, like way earlier, and a lot of us do that, right? Like in mm-hmm. hand, we can register two months ago. Yeah. So I had a lot of friends who came in this September. Mm-hmm. And also this May, like I kept making friends of the new batches also, so understand to understand the reality, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I heard complaints of these students, like a few, I wouldn't want to name them because they're still in Canada. Mm-hmm. They started to complain that they were here for an offline experience, right? Like a university experience. Yeah. And their classes, and they registered for offline classes. Mm-hmm. Uh, even forget about sitting in the university or the theater. They were like, at least if we'll go to the theater, that is also good. Mm-hmm. Like, we'll at least step out of the house. Mm-hmm. They started to complain that the university, without asking permission from them, mm-hmm. they started to shuffle their uh, courses, their schedule. Basically, we are responsible for making our own schedule in Canada, how things work. Okay. It's different from how it works in India. In India, we are given a schedule and we follow that. Mm-hmm. In Western countries, we are responsible to make our own schedule Mm -hmm. so they made their own schedule and their complaint was Mm -hmm. that their schedules were changed Mm -hmm. and that's not done in a western country at all like or canada at all that's just not acceptable like Mm -hmm. how can you change my class without asking me yeah you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so first thing the schedule was changed the second thing and everybody makes their schedule according to their part-time job availability Mm -hmm. So right. everything is well planned out, like yes, everything right. runs in a system. Hmm. Then the second complaint was that there everything was shifted to online. So I know friends of mine who, in fact, I was just talking to one of them yesterday and they were like, um, they are just sitting online and giving all the four courses, you know, they don't have the option. And hmm. they were not asked before being shifted to online classes, like they were not asked for permission that hello, hmm. or even drop a single mail, inform the student. Wow. They did not do none of that. They did not even inform the students over an email. And mm. there was no communication that happened to and fro between the students and, and the university. Mm. So yeah, I mean, it's only getting worse. So basically the wait line, uh, the, uh, I'll tell you how exactly we wait like emergency. Mm. First of all, to understand, mm. because everything works for us in an Indian context mindset, right? Mm. I'm sick today, I'll go to a private doctor and take care yeah. of myself. So in Canada, everything is running publicly. Everything is run by the government. Mm -hmm. We do not have private options there. Mm -hmm. The healthcare there is not privatized at all. Mm -hmm. So because there is a shortage of staff, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can go to the hospital, but 
until and unless it's an emergency mm-hmm. until and unless it's like a trauma triage basically mm-hmm. triage mm-hmm. you will not get like the services and that's just a done thing mm-hmm. i mean that is uh, how do i even explain that that's just how the system works because the staff is short right so even if my uh, x-ray like i needed an x-ray today mm-hmm. so uh, there is no place that i can go to and ask them i can my only option is to go to an emergency mm-hmm. no actually let me explain the system so mm-hmm. me as a even as a temporary resident i need to have a doctor doctor there like they have family doctors yeah so the healthcare system starts at the bottom level i need to vrinda kato needs to go get a family doctor mm-hmm. and the wait line in nova scotia to have a family doctor is more than one and a half year if today i want to have a family doctor it's one and a half year like i can only get a family doctor because that's the wait long line like time wait time sorry mm-hmm. yeah so i could not get a family doctor and my only option was once i get a family doctor then the family doctor will do the a uh, general check up mm-hmm. like that's the procedure if everything was running in the system there if everything was fine if they had proper stuff so i'll go to the family doctor he'll check my knee and he'll send me to a specialist and then he'll send me where do i have to get my x-ray he'll refer me all of that that's the system mm-hmm. so when the system is itself is not working properly mm-hmm. like even my only our only option there is to go to the emergency mm-hmm. for all of us even canadian citizens anything happens we all have to go to the emergency Mm-hmm. and in emergency if uh, if you're not bleeding mm-hmm. in fact as a matter of fact even mm-hmm. if you're bleeding mm-hmm. uh, or even if your like bones are broken and the things that i saw that in emergency like people's uh, bones are broken mm-hmm. and they are themselves waiting for 10 hours sitting there with a broken hand like there is no option but to bear the pain mm-hmm. or sometimes in some cases they give you some injection or something to calm the pain down Mm-hmm. but that's it so like me trying to get a minute x-ray mm-hmm. you know what i mean like that's it's not an emergency case so nobody is going to give me the service nobody is going to help me there i mean why would they there are people dying they would attend to them first right or somebody is born so they would attend to them first even if you're willing to pay a higher price to get this done you know on an on a yeah you won't be able to do that no so that's where i began no that's why i meant the privatization thing to explain you about that so in uh-huh. india it's like somebody who's rich uh-huh. can go to a private yeah. hospital and take care of themselves but it is because it's a socialist country no yeah. canada is not like a canada is a socialist system so they think everybody is equal yeah. everybody deserves the same all of that uh-huh. so I mean they don't have privatization doesn't matter what money you carry people in fact canadians i met a lot of canadians they themselves uh, go to america mm-hmm. to because for them transportation to america is so much easier right like uh, so they go to america to get like mm-hmm. treatments they even move to america to get treatments mm-hmm. if they get some severe health uh, issues Mm-hmm. So basically, you get like a diploma. Okay, you get paid a diploma, and you're promised like good paying jobs and all of that. Mm-hmm. That's what the immigration consultants tell us. You can go check out the website as well, the university's mm-hmm. website. They promise all those false statements. Mm-hmm. And what happens is basically when you land in Canada and when you're doing a diploma, a diploma is also worth. My diploma was worth thirty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. You can do the uh, currency conversion again. Mm-hmm. And uh, what I'm getting after, and I'm getting, I'm being taught. Man- management stuff mm-hmm. uh, the only reason i know about the healthcare crisis and all because that is exactly what i was being taught in the classrooms mm-hmm. like they were teaching us all of that stuff mm-hmm. and even that was really bad honestly i don't even want to get into the depth of you know mm-hmm. like they are charging 4200 dollars for one course and all they are doing is giving us 12 classes in one semester mm-hmm. and uh, they are literally not teaching us anything anyway Hmm. All of that is, you know, like that's. Uh-huh. I can keep going on and on. Like <laughs> yeah. it was so bad, I can rant. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but anyway, sticking to the question that you asked me, that after we get, uh, after we finish our education, so first thing is, we have something called as co-op internship. What a co-op is in Can- Canadian system is in like an internship. Mm-hmm. So even the university should ideally be helping us with the co-op, right? I was a healthcare student, mm-hmm. so they do not help you even to get internships. like they do not have good options that's coming in there mm-hmm. to get like the internships mm-hmm. so that's the first thing and uh, the second thing why did i mention this is mm-hmm. 
to get a job in Canada, there is something called as like that's the narration in Canada mm-hmm. that you need to have a Canadian experience. That you need to have a Canadian experience, mm-hmm. or else you're not gonna getting you're not gonna get a job. Mm-hmm. So when I am not getting good placements from the university side, there is zero help when it comes to getting a place good placement. Mm-hmm. Where am I to even have a Canadian experience to even get a job for myself after I finish my graduation? Mm-hmm. Right after I finish like graduate Cape Breton University. So that was the problem. And uh, the second thing was uh, no, the third thing is mm-hmm. that once we get in there, we realize that we are just being called for cheap labor. Mm-hmm. Like uh, when I mean cheap labor, basically again comparing it to the pay scale, we are just getting jobs in Tim Hortons. That's the coffee shop. Mm-hmm. Or you can buy yourself a car and drive an Uber. Even again, that is a very big investment that an Indian student has to make mm-hmm. in Canada to buy a car as well, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So basically, you realize that, uh, and then there are these patient-sitting jobs in healthcare. Mm-hmm. I am being taught how to manage the healthcare, but I am not given a job of a manager, even a basic level manager, mm-hmm. right? You have to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. But then you are giving the basic job of a nanny, where you just have to look after the patient. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, sit by their side. When I say nanny, mm-hmm. you just have to sit by their side. You have to change their clothes and their diapers. You have to give them the medicines, mm-hmm. and that is called a patient sitter, like a home healthcare worker. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is what it's called, and it's a NOC C job. Like mm-hmm. jobs are divided there in NOC A, B, C level in Canada, like tier one, tier two, tier three jobs. Mm-hmm. So we are just being called there. To fill there to address their labor shortage. That's why we are being called in the ca- like you know mm-hmm. like through these universities like the whole immigration thing. Mm-hmm. So you realize that I'm investing thirty thousand mm-hmm. dollars and what is the ROI? What mm-hmm. is the financial in- uh, return? You know like mm-hmm. why am I even putting thirty thousand dollars in there? Mm-hmm. So basically you are not paid well according like forget even about the pay. You're not even got like you're not mm-hmm. given a job that will pay you well. Yeah. So yeah, that's. Like it's basically a false narration of the whole Canadian education system. Yeah. Uh, so, Vrinda, what what are your future plans mm-hmm. now in India? If I'll be honest, I am like I am still taking time, right? Like to figure things out because I mean I had my life set and planned according to me in the li- like for the next seven eight years. Mm-hmm. I could see my future ahead of myself. So I do think that I'm still trying to figure out. Mm-hmm. Where am I at? You know, mm-hmm. it was like it, it took a lot of courage to leave Canada. Yeah, sure. honestly, mm-hmm. like just to, so that this is not what I was promised and this is all what I'm receiving. So I'm still figuring out. I would rather say I'm still figuring out, and I'm pretty lost. If I'll be honest, I'm very very lost with my career right now. Yeah, I mean the aspirations that go uh, there with it's like completely different. It's completely different, yeah, and I don't think I want to settle for any less. I mean, I know that my Indian education system has taught me way more, mm-hmm. and it it really uplifts students if somebody wants to get uplifted. And over there, the education system is just like pulling you down, you know. Yeah. But it it makes you feel that you don't deserve this. That no, you are somebody who doesn't deserve mm-hmm. this for whatever reasons. I mean, I don't even want to get into the whole aspect. But yeah, so I can say I'm pretty lost. I'll figure it out. I'm sure. Yeah.